Hey guys, it's your humble host, Red Kev's Paper First, and we're back with another video. It's an update to the Grand Rapids shooting, and it's not good. Um, I was hoping that common sense and, uh, you know, logic would prevail, because the um, county attorney general um, said that he was waiting for manufacturer reports, which included how the taser worked and whether or not it was still lethal. And uh, apparently, because you remember this is in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Governor Gretchen Whitmer, still governor, and she's very much a witch. So I have speculation um, or a sneaking feeling somebody got to the prosecutor. I don't know why I said attorney general. Sorry. Um, but got to the prosecutor. And uh, yeah. So anyway, let's read. Christopher Schur employment with GRPD terminated. Christopher Schur has been fired from the Grand Rapids Police Department in a statement released Wednesday afternoon. Grand Rapids City Manager Mark Washington says Schur's employment with the city has been terminated after the former officer waived his right to a discharge hearing. Schur's finding, or excuse me, firing comes after the Kent County prosecutor announced he had issued a second-degree murder charge against Schur for the shooting death of Patrick Laloya. So either this scumbag got a hold of the manufacturer reports and said, oh, it's no big deal because the taser wasn't a gun, which I wouldn't be surprised, or the manufacturer reports never fully came in and somebody got to them. Either way, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Washington announced, sure, I've been fired from GRPD in a statement Wednesday afternoon. Last Friday, the police chief and labor relations office recommended that I terminate Christopher Schur's employment with the city. I accepted the recommendation. Oh, so there's, I bet you there's a lot of uh, um, bullying going on behind the scenes for this stuff. I accepted that recommendation and scheduled a required discharge hearing. I have been informed by Mr. Schur's representatives that he is waiving his right to the hearing and therefore I've decided to terminate Mr. Schur's employment with the Grand Rapids Police Department effective June 10th, 2022, due to an ongoing criminal matter and potential for civil uh, litigation, I will not be providing any additional comment concerning Mr. Schur at this time. Christopher Schur made his first to uh, his God, I can't. I'm just, Christopher Schur made his first court appearance Friday afternoon before posting bond and leaving jail within a matter of hours. So yeah, he's not behind bars, thank God. Um. Schur's attorneys say that they will not take a deal, good for them, do not kowtow, and they plan to take the case to trial. That's all these freaking leftist freaking lunatics need. Um, last week, Schur turned himself in and was booked into a Calhoun County Jail in Battle Creek. He was arraigned in Kent County early Friday afternoon via a live video feed. Schur was able to post bond and walk out of the Colwyn County Jail later that afternoon. Good. Under the Michigan Penal Code, a secondary murder charge is defined as a non-premeditated killing or a murder that's caused by someone's reckless conduct, including an obvious lack of concern for a person's life, which was not the case, not by far. There's no justification or excuse for death under this charge, such as self-defense. However, it is less severe than first-degree murder. Um, no, it's not, because if convicted, it sure faces up to life in prison with the possibility of parole. So... I swear, it's one thing after the other. We have the evolved where the cops don't want to do anything, and then we have police officers who go out of their way to do their jobs, and they are just called murderers. So, lesson to be learned, boys and girls. Don't fight with the cops. Don't reach for their tools. And according to another article, someone named Walmack was relieved and Laloya's family is happy um, that there's charges and so, but you know, let's not teach our children any manners. Let's not teach them, hey, don't fight with the cops. Don't do any of that. But we're just going to cry and scream because the lawyer was black. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so as for the hearing, it is June 21st. Um, let me actually see if I can pull that other article real quick. So, 
So yes, we it, they're calling it a probable cause hearing is what um, Schreiber would be next in court on June 21st for his probable cause hearing. Um, obviously, we already know he's not employed anymore. Um, it's no surprise one way or the other, says Lewis Langham, a professor with WMU Cooley Law School, it's standard operating procedure for law enforcement agencies. Langham says he knew this was coming ever since charges were brought last week. And either I missed an article or they didn't announce it yet. For officers, sure. For any other officer, once you're charged by the prosecutor, that pretty much sets your fate as far as your job. Sure, waived a hearing instead of just opting to allow Washington to make the termination official, which I would have waived the hearing too, because at that point, if you're already going, like, if I was in his shoes, Officer Schurz, if you're going to already terminate me or whatnot and not have my back, why would I waste my time with the hearing? You're not going to hear anything I have to say, so screw it. I don't want to waste my time with you. Uh, Sure, waiving a hearing instead of opting to allow Washington to make the termination official, Langham believes that this was the right move. It's a no-win situation, he says. When Kent County Commissioner Robert S. Walmack got the news, he was relieved to hear it. It was adequate for the city manager and police chief to relieve him of his duty and send a message out that this would not be tolerated in our city, says Walmack. What? What's not tolerated? The police actually defending themselves? Like, this? in this case, it was justified? I'm sorry. I don't care. Like, it's always law professors that stick their nose into this. It's like, we shouldn't have killed him. Well, don't touch the cop's taser. Duh, it's still a lethal weapon. It's a pain compliance tool. Um, I'm sorry. So, and it has a stun gun feature. We've already broke down the freaking... Um, model and whatnot. And what kind of pees me off is what happened to the manufacturer reports. As I said, either the prosecutor got those and said, oh, the, it's not a big deal, the taser wasn't a big deal, or he never got those and it's being pushed to proceed anyway, or it's a mix. So something really, really stinks here. <sighs> Instead of teaching people because Obama did this, where all the police are evil and even though when he was doing this, his vice president at the time, no, joke in chief, Joe Biden, um, militarized the police. So it was, they were working to create kind of like this na uh, narrative, demonize the cops, give them all these military weapons to arm them. And then our former joke in chief uh, made them look like demons. So... All being done on purpose, and now we're punishing cops for actually doing their jobs. And we praise the ones or try to cover the ones who we tell to stand down from school shootings or who refuse to go in because they're too chicken shit and want to make up a bunch of excuses and pull whatever they can out of their ass. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Evolve PD. Anyway, uh, the Lloyd family's happy to see that he has been fired, says Walmack. They're very happy to see that there have been charges. But they're still hurt. The Loy family is still mourning their son. And it sucks. Any family losing their child sucks. I'm not going to sit here and go, well, I'm glad he's got. No, I just, the fact that Aloya chose to do the things that he did and that quietly turned himself in and decided to fight the cop. I mean, and don't get me wrong, there are a lot of bad cops, but just from the four different angles of the video, from what was described, we broke down the freaking, uh, Taser that has a stun gun feature. We talked about the body cam. Loy has a rap sheet on the clean domestic violence. A charge that was pending, mind you. Before LaLoya died, it was pending in a different state. We covered that as well. And I'll post a link in the description or you'll see it um, as a link after this video ends or towards the end of that video. But yeah, so... As I've said before, because I think I said this in one of my uh, videos talking about security, I am not surprised officers are assholes these days, or that's their immediate go-to, um, because of what's going on. You do have good officers still on the force that are either they're going to walk away because they're tired of the bullshit, they're being tired of demonized for doing their job. Um, the last security company I just freaking ran from you even get that crap as a security guard. Now, granted, I've never been in any really life-threatening situations, thank God, and I've never had to tap anybody to the ground, don't want to. As I've already said, I'm unarmed. But at the same time, like, I've gotten demonized 
or rather scolded for doing my job. So, yeah, the fact that we're doing this to our police officers and then when Steph does go down, like, that situation was either the lawyer or the cop. Because the fact he was still grabbing for the taser, he was going to use it on sure. Why else would he grab it? He wasn't trying to defend himself because at that point, the two cartridges were done. You don't ever gra grab a cop's work belt. You don't ever touch their taser. You don't go for their gun. You don't go for their clips. You don't go for their flashlight, their baton. Nothing. But we're not teaching people that. We're just teaching, uh, teaching people cops are demons. We're not teaching people, well, sometimes your, co your actions have life threatening consequences up to the point of death. Like, why aren't we teaching this anymore? I'm sorry. We have we do it with drunk drivers. We do it with uh, people who decide to drive underneath the influence of weed and other shit. Why aren't we doing it with this anymore? Like, you fight with the cop. And especially when you have a potentially stolen vehicle or you have a rap sheet and you have a history. Like, I hope to God... His defense really hones in on that taser, breaks down the functions, explains why the camera is dislodged. Because as I said before, and I'm going to try to wrap this up here in the next few minutes, if it's an Axon 3 or an Axon 2, um, it is not hard with enough force to get that to twist and fall off. Because once that camera is horizontal like this, it pops off. That's it. Um, if it's another type of body camera... Um, where you have the chest plate right here, but it has like a little clip where it slides in, that's even easier to get off during a scuffle, okay? So, but a lot of PD has those axons and there's different models. I've just seen a lot of PD with the axon three, very rarely axon two. Um, it could be a whole different body camera. But if it is, again, at the same time, a lot of body cameras you can get off of uh, Walmart, Amazon, some of these uh, police stores, whether they're online or physical, mainly have that clip that just slides right in. Because I have my own body cam that I purchased for work that has that clip that just slides right in. And those are easier to get off than the freaking axons. So anyway, though, I'm finished here. Um, I'm not going to do a Rakita Law or Umbrella Guy and sit through the hearing. I'm more than likely going to be working... Um, yeah, 21st is too, well, kind of depends. So, anyway, I will try to find out when the hearing is, at least post a link or something. Um, but I, I can't su sit through court hearings so much anymore these days, just because they make me so freaking angry. Anyway, with that being said, you guys have a good one, and fingers and press cross for Officer Sure, and I really hope that his lawyers go for this city's throat because this is just wrong. This is beyond wrong. As I explained in the use of force chart, because you heard heavy breathing, both men were spent, and at that point, it was a do or die. And uh, because Officer Sure didn't look like he had very much hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat training, from what it looks like, because the way that he was uh, wrestling with the lawyer, um, this is just an observation. I don't have experience with hand-to-hand -hand stuff. But to me, it looked like he didn't know too much. Or, as I said before also, is he waited too long to take the lawyer down. I'm not talking about shooting him. I'm talking about he waited too long to take the lawyer down. Um, if it were me, I would not have tried to chase a lawyer. Um, when Lori got a good distance because of how far the taser prong shot out, I would have tried to tase the lawyer as he was running away. Um, and that had to be a quick move. So, anyway, with that being said, I'm going to end it here. And I just hope there's a bit of justice somewhere because... <sighs> with the crap that's been going on and the bullshit Biden just signed because it's freaking Pride Month and so... Just we, we need some sort of silver lining in this mess, so I really hope that this is it. Um, anyway, you guys have a good one. <laughs>